Love how Allie's really talking this up. Don't go out of your way, you guys, to see this. It's going to hit on nostalgia more than anything, but it is not riveting in any way. Hey, y'all. It's LJ here, owner and founder of Smart Moms Plan Disney and Smart Moms Travel. We are so glad you're here for another episode of the Smart Moms Plan Disney podcast. Now, here's your host, Allie. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Smart Moms Plan Disney podcast. It is so exciting to be back after a short break. We took spring break. Most of us traveled to Disney World. We saw each other. We had such a great time. It was amazing to spend time with each other and our families. And now we're back. And I'm so happy to be recording today with Katie and Carla. We're going to talk about something I think every single listener wants to know and every single traveler to any destination wants to know. But before we dig in, we, of course, just want to thank you so much again for listening. We hope you missed us and noticed we were gone over our break and that you're glad that we're back in your podcast feed. It means a lot to us. So thanks so much for being here. Today, we're going to be talking about free, yes, free things at Disney World. I don't think that's something that most people think go hand in hand. Disney World costs money. Disney is expensive. Disney you have to save up for. Disney and free don't usually go together, but we are going to debunk that today and talk about what you can do at Disney World that is free. But before we do, did you girls have a good spring break? We did. Kind of an uneventful other than seeing y'all. It was really good to get together. I liked that. We were just at Disney for my birthday and for Easter too. So we've been at Disney quite a lot over spring break. (laughs) Yeah, we drove down. Obviously, you all know, and most of the listeners know, I live in the Midwest and we typically fly, but over spring break, Prices are really high and we have the time to give a drive. So we drove down three little ones, uh, but they did great. And we did not hit any traffic, which was amazing. I think we just planned the days that we were leaving around the spring break traffic and it was awesome. And we had the best time. We did mostly resort and pool. So we had a lot of free while included. I guess we're going to talk a little bit about the difference between free and included on this episode. But yeah, we all, the podcast team, if you follow us on social media at Smart Moms Plan Disney Podcast, you probably saw us all getting together. We had the best time. We did a monorail bar crawl, which we talk about here on the show a lot. My kids came with us. They were well entertained with desserts and cell phones. <laughs> and Becky's husband. Yeah, Becky's husband uh, entertained them quite a bit. He was amazing. And we all hung out at the Enchanted Rose, which I loved. It was it was like a highlight of my trip. The bar was amazing over at the Grand Floridian. We had a beautiful view and a, a sort of secluded patio to ourselves. Awesome. It was really cool. I was going to say the other big thing that happened over spring break was we celebrated the one year birthday of the Smart Moms Plan Disney podcast, right? Yeah, we just passed the one year mark of our first episode release, which was so cool. We hosted a live birthday party for our Patreon community. If you're not already in our Patreon community, you can find that link in our bio, become a Diamond Mind member for monthly perks. And things like that birthday party were so awesome and intimate to get to know some listeners. We gave away some awesome prizes. And then, of course, we let our Facebook community in toward the latter half of it. So that was really awesome. We're so happy to be to be back on this, you know, back end of a, a whole year that we've done this and talking about something so exciting today. Free things at Disney. I can't wait. But I do want to make a note that, you know, as we were kind of brainstorming and talking about this episode, I always laugh with my kids and I say, you know, they they'll say, Oh, mom, look, this was free. And I'm like, that's not free. That's included. (laughs) You know, because when we're on our Disney cruises, all of the food, you don't pay for the food when you get it. It's all included in the price of your cruise, right? Or when you go to the Mickey's Very Merry Christmas party, and you get that ornament, right? When you walk in, my kids are like a free ornament. I'm like, Included ornament, <laughs> you know, it's, you paid for that. I paid for that. Trust me. <laughs> Today, the things that we're talking about are not those fake free things, those included things included with purchase. These are legitimately free experiences on your Disney vacation. And I want to be clear that we're keeping that in mind. You know, there are included experiences on your trip. And then there are free things to keep in mind that aren't going to add any cost that you didn't necessarily already pay for. And that's what I'm excited to, to kind of break down today. I'm excited for it too. There's actually, there's a lot on this list. I know you already mentioned, Allie, that like most people don't talk about free things at Disney is not often correlated, right? But there's quite a few things that we're going to be checking off the list today. So I'm excited to share it all. 
Yeah, absolutely. When was the last time either of you did something free on vacation? We just stayed, like I mentioned, we had a weekend at Yacht Club to celebrate my birthday and Easter. So we spent a lot of time just hanging out on the boardwalk, catching the sideshows. My kids love the magician. There was a like a lighted jump rope show called the Skip Easy. Oh, they were so great. They talked to my girls too. That's all entirely free. And I love hanging out on the boardwalk. If you were to ask me, what's your favorite spot in Disney to just hang out? I would easily tell you the boardwalk. I love hanging out on the boardwalk. And for my birthday, I was wearing the celebration pin that says I'm celebrating my birthday. And there was quite a few cast members that gave me like free desserts. We got free cannoli from the pizza window, which was super, super nice. We got free Finding Nemo cheesecake at the quick service at Art of Animation. Like it was really cool. Yeah, that is cool. That's how far Katie has come in one year. Would Katie have ever said that her favorite place on Disney property was the boardwalk a year ago? No, I think that's your and my influence for sure. And and (laughs) Becky, she loves the boardwalk too. We've had that. We've had quite an effect here on Katie because I I can't believe you mentioned specifically the magic show because the magician over at the boardwalk, the boardwalk entertainment is absolutely free. That absolutely is true. That is not included with say, you know, like the pool. It is a free experience and entertainment. We shout out to Moreau. That is the magician's name on the boardwalk. He made our trip on spring break. Absolutely made it. He learned all my kiddos names and made my oldest daughter the main attraction in the magic show. I have a 12 minute long video, 12 minutes where he's just specifically working with her in front of the audience. He has the entire audience, which is a large collection of people over on the boardwalk, Mm -hmm. um, chanting her name. You know, he got down on one knee with her and put his hand on her heart. He was just absolutely unbelievable. Free experience. I'm sobbing on the sideline, you know, I'm like videoing on that mom for sure. And she broke a fork, which she now still has. And it's her lucky charm. It was, it's amazing. And it, yeah, it's just the very best. She told us all about it on whenever we met you at that bar crawl. She had the fork with her and everything to show us and tell us all about it. It was really cute. It was cute. I think she made Becky watch the entire 12 minute video. I was like I'm twice. <laughs> Yeah, twice, maybe two times through. But it was so special. It was amazing. And, you know, she's going to carry that around forever. That's a souvenir that didn't cost us anything. And it was really, really special. And then just riding the monorail that night is definitely going to be something that we talk about as well as something that's free. Yeah, absolutely. What about you, Carla? Anything come to mind? Gosh, so many. Every time I go to Disney, I'm looking at this list we compiled, which I'm pretty impressed at. And I would say every time you go to Disney, you probably are doing at least, I don't know, five to 10 free things. I agree. I wonder how many easily. Yeah. I wonder how many of these people are just not going to know about that. They're going to now add to their list as added fun and entertainment for something that they're already paying a lot of money for. And now they're going to get to do these things without adding to that. Uh, Before we do, we have some really exciting news to announce as today's episode is dropping on April 9th. Disney has also released a brand new promotion for Disney Visa card holders. So if you have a Disney Visa card, you actually now have the opportunity to book a Disney World package and get free dining. So I did not think that we were going to be talking about dining and free in the same sentence on this episode, but that is an amazing promotion that is coming out. Free A free dining plan is going to end up thousands of dollars on your vacation package that's that not going to cost you a dime extra the last time that disney dropped the free dining promo my clients saved on average like twelve hundred dollars like that's an incredible savings so i'm really excited for them to be dropping another dining plan promotion for disney visa card holders yeah if you're already booked with a smart mom's travel agent make sure you get in touch with them you know one of us or the whoever you're booked with to to get this modified if you're a Disney Visa card holder and your vacation package falls within the parameters of the promo. And if you're not already booked, make sure you hit the link in our bio so we can help you explore the promo. Like I said, it does have parameters, but if you can make a trip work within them, uh, you're going to get a huge value. And I I don't know who does not want free dining. (laughs) So I'm really excited about it and hoping that a lot of y'all will fill out that link so we can get in touch. All right, we are going to take a quick break. We come back, we're going to jump right in and talk about this uh, free stuff. Are you a dedicated fan of the Smart Moms Plan Disney podcast and feel the need to take notes while listening to each and every episode? Our Diamond Mind Patreon subscription is a perfect fit for you. 
Every month, our Diamond Mind subscribers receive a new Disney travel guide that simplifies and organizes the podcast content. Join our community at patreon.com and search for Smart Moms Plan Disney Podcast. Joining our Patreon supports our woman-owned small businesses and allows you more simplicity and support in planning your next Disney vacation. Join us at patreon.com and we'll see you there. All right, we're back and we're talking free at Disney. And I think we're going to blow people's minds here with the amount of things that you can really find that are free with Disney, not included with purchase, right? And some of these, I think we're kind of pushing the limit on what's included versus free. And and I'll talk about that a little bit, but these are not going to cost extra. So first couple are kind of small, but can become bigger, right? Katie, you started mentioning you wore a celebration button for your birthday. Celebration buttons are something that every single person traveling to Disney should wear. When I book people for Disney, every single time you call in a vacation package, the cast member will say, are your clients celebrating anything? And if I don't know of a birthday or an anniversary or something specific that we're celebrating, I still always say, yes, yes, we're celebrating because traveling to Disney is a celebration. And so I just say, just put down other because everybody going to Disney is celebrating, right? It's it's exciting. You may have saved up for a long time. You may have had to wait a long time for that vacation with your family. You are celebrating the time. You're celebrating the, yeah, you know, whatever it is, it's a celebration. And so you should always have a button on and write whatever you want on the button itself. I was going to say, so like the free birthday pins, for example, I think a lot of people are aware of the birthday one. And obviously I had already mentioned that you would get, you know, free desserts and stuff like that. And I think if you go to a table service restaurant and you tell them it's your birthday, you're kind of half expecting them to give you like a free dessert. But I don't feel like that's common at like a quick service place. And so I just thought that was really nice that we were pixie dusted by cast members, even at quick service places with free desserts. But on top of the other celebrations and everything, did you know that being a first time visitor to Disney World is its own celebration? It gets its own unique pin. And so if you're going to Disney World for the first time, they have a pin just for that that says first visit. And I remember my whole family had those for our trip in September of 2021. We were pixie dusted like crazy that trip. We got like free desserts. We got a free Mickey pretzel. Cast members would let us like ride on the rides twice. We so much happened. And I'm sure that it probably is in part because of wearing that first visit pin. Say, and not only are cast members celebrating you, other patrons in the park are celebrating you. Katie and I recently went for our uh, 100,000 streams. And we had a pin on and so many people in lines were asking what we were celebrating. We got a chance to share the podcast with them. Mm -hmm. People are hyped about those pins. Yeah. And it's not about like gaming the system. Like, oh, if I wear this, I'm going to get free food. You know, it's about truly embracing Disney magic. That's how I see it. You know, Disney is full of magic and pixie dust. And I can't believe I just said that, but it's true. It's full of magic and pixie (laughs) dust. Like that wearing that button is free itself and fun. And then it can amount to even more for your whole vacation. So Mm -hmm. we always wear them. We celebrate everything. Every time I hit like a travel agent booking milestone and we go to the the parks, my wife gets me a button at check it. You know, she'll run into the desk really fast and grab one and bring it out to me. And that's always really nice. And when we've gone as a team, we've worn team buttons before. Like we're just celebrating being together. Yeah. You know, it's just sometimes you might just get like even a better table at a restaurant, which is really nice. It's awesome. So definitely get your buttons. You can get them at your resort desk, like at the um, resort concierge desk or whatever. And you can also get them in the park at guest services. Usually the guest service buildings are really close to the entrance of the park. You can find that on your app map and they'll write on them for you or you can write on it. And it's just really fun enhancement to your trip. Mm -hmm. Another really important one, Wi-Fi. Disney World Wi-Fi at your resort and in the parks all over property free which is actually kind of amazing, you guys, because like a Wi-Fi package on a Disney cruise, obviously it's different. You're in international waters and it's not as easy to make that free. But like an internet package can be really costly in the parks and on Disney grounds, free Wi-Fi, just everywhere, literally everywhere. Like in front of the castle, you have free Wi-Fi. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, sometimes it can run slowly depending on where you are. But honestly, a lot of times when I'm doing the virtual queue, in the morning, I am crazy person and I will run an internet speed test on Wi-Fi versus off Wi-Fi to see like which one's working better before I try for my virtual queue. And almost every single time, the Disney Wi-Fi being connected 
is the faster is the faster option for like a virtual queue. You are so diligent whenever it comes to those virtual queues. <laughs> I've never missed one ever. That's awesome. So free Wi-Fi is a great one. My dad loves the free Wi-Fi. Oh my gosh. If he if he knows he can tap into a Wi-Fi and it's not going to cost him anything, he's like, this is the best place I've ever traveled. Uh, <laughs> another one that your kids are going to love, wake up calls. Have you all ever done this? I did it on our first trip. We had a call from Mickey and they call in the morning like you would expect like a wake up call, but you pick up the phone and it's Mickey telling you good morning. You know, it's it's really special. One also Mickey calls you if you're going on a cruise. Yes, and that's free as well. And we've used that one. We did that at the boardwalk. Mickey, we set it up and we had Mickey ask Mickey to call and he called with Minnie and that was, you know, my kids. Aww. I couldn't believe Mickey and Minnie were calling my phone. You know what I mean? Like really amazing. And then there he was. And then our second cruise, we asked that goofy call and he called and my kids just absolutely loved that. It was amazing. And um, it's really special to have that message from them. And it is, in, it's free. You can do it at the, I've never done it. I've never had them do a wake up call before. You just set it up at the front desk. It, obviously it's been a while since I've done it. Yeah, definitely. Let's, uh, let's, keep, let's keep going here. Katie, what, what else is uh, free here at the. At so I would say next on the list, if we're still thinking about like in your resort, what are you getting for free? I would say that life jackets are really important. A lot of people will say, you know, do I have to bring floaties for my kid? Do I have to bring the water wingies? I love that Disney just provides that for you. I love that it's it's the super soft brand ones. So they're like a life jacket. They're comfortable on my kid. They don't feel really restricted in them, but they feel comfortable enough that they can just like confidently swim. So those are at every Disney pool. They're at the Disney water parks and they're just there and they have tons and tons of them in a variety of sizes. I've never had any problem finding them for my kids at any parks or, or pools. Um, and we go to the water parks pretty often. So I have always been really impressed with that. And it really, it, it makes my life easier as a mom. I don't have to pack it, but also I can feel more confident that my kids are, are not going to be troublesome in the water. <laughs> Sometimes as a parent, you're getting in the pool with your kids and you're like, this is not relaxing for me. <laughs> yeah, I never think I never think swimming with my kids that can't swim is relaxing like ever. Yeah. I think it's really hard. And my wife usually do is the one that does that. Yeah. Having my kiddos in life jackets. And you're right. There's never a short supply. Like everybody knows I have young twins. They're not the strongest of swimmers yet. Sure, certainly not strong enough to just go off in the waters by themselves. And we've never had a problem getting to any time we need them. Totally fine. Not only that, but pool towels. Pool towels is huge. Every time I go anywhere in Florida, I feel like I have to pack pool towels. There's a surplus of them at all the resorts, at all the pools, probably at the D Disney water parks. Is that right, Katie? For like two dollars a piece at the water parks. Yeah. Gotcha. But yeah, I mean, I think that's huge. Yeah, and that's towing the line there, of course, with like included versus free. And I think it it really is you know it's a free thing this is something that like you said katie they charge for them at the water park it could be an added cost and it's just not and i i love that you never have to worry we have wet towels we don't need to keep using them you know put them in the towel return grab a couple new ones literally at any point of the day they're never low it's disney they're never low and if they are low they're refilled immediately it's really awesome and you know our most recent day we were at the beach club which that pool is the busiest, biggest of all. The number of life jacket stands at that pool is crazy. You know, they're just around every single corner. So accessible. There's another huge one that I love at resorts. And I think this is new as of last year that they finally brought it back is parking. Huge. I mean, if you stay off site anywhere at Disney, you're probably going to pay number one for Wi-Fi. Number two, 32. I think I've paid $40 a day. For parking at a resort. Yeah, it's when they brought that back, I was really surprised. I, I like to be really honest, I didn't think that was ever coming back, but it is. And it's a, it's a humongous part. Like that is a huge savings overall, the fact that it is free. Yeah, I think that's huge too, because there are other destinations you can visit in Orlando. And I was reading this week that they just started charging $32 a day not going to drop any names there, but. Uh, and that's up from $27 last year. Yeah. That's 
significant. Yeah, huge. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's at the resorts and the parks. It's all over. And like, that's, I just can't stress enough uh, how much money overall you would be spending if you had to pay at all those places to park. So if you're an offsite guest, so it is important you know that this free parking is for specifically onsite guests. Yeah, exactly. And whenever we're talking to our clients, a lot of times people will come to us and they'll be like, eh, I want to save money by staying offsite. And I will do the math for my clients and I'll be like, it literally is going to cost you the same to stay at a value resort on site and you're going to have a way better experience than if you stayed off site. And one of those like hidden fees that I usually factor in is you're going to be paying this much money to park at the parks every day on top of whatever you're going to be paying for parking at your offsite hotel on top of resort fees. Like there's all of these hidden fees with staying offsite and parking is a really big one that adds up. <laughs> so I think that the onsite parking is fantastic for Disney guests. Yeah. And this next one we have, I think is kind of funny. Like when we're talking about free things, this feels pretty bare minimum baseline, <laughs> um, but water, you know, cups of ice and water are free around Disney world, of course, as they sh very much should be. Uh, but in the in the parks and with the dead of heat and in the dead of summer, you can always access a cup of water, which bare minimum baseline. But it, important to point out that you should never be without water. It's free. yeah. Disney wants you to stay hydrated. They want you to have a good time, too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. OK. Have you all ever played the Play Disney app? I haven't played with it yet. You can download the Disney Play app for free, but I plan to do it on our upcoming trip with a lot of our gal pals we're going to be going to hollywood studios on may 4th and i know that galaxy's edge has all of these little puzzles that you can do and interact with the land with the disney play app and i am like so excited to really get into it on star wars day yeah so the play disney app you can use your Disney login that you already have for your My Disney experience. You can also set up youth accounts like for kiddos. I know that that was a thing, RIP, the Galactic Star Cruiser, that kids could could use that for that. But I know you can have kid and adult accounts within the Play Disney app. And I've never used it, but there are all kinds of different ways to use it on your Disney vacation. And it just kind of enhances the experience overall. It makes it a lot easier if you're like waiting in lines for little kiddos too. You'll often see like Disney is great. And we've said it before about making the queue itself like interactive so that you don't feel the, the dregs of waiting in the heat of a line, right? But um, the Disney Play app adds another layer to that. So I know we often talk about, for example, Peter Pan's flight always having a ridiculously long wait time. And there's a game in the Disney Play app just for when you're standing in line in Peter Pan's flight, right? So they do build a lot into that app to make it make your day more fun. Yeah, I bet a lot of people don't realize the queue interaction that goes along with that app. And Disney kind of has really thought it through. It's a great way to, you know, maybe you don't want to buy Genie Plus. Maybe it's $40 a day, like it tiptoed near over spring break, and it's just not something you're budgeting for. This is not going to take that weight away, but it's going to make it a little less traumatizing. Yeah, for sure. And Becky was saying that they have a really good addition for the World Showcase area in Epcot, too. That's worth exploring, too. Yeah, the next one on our list, I'm not super familiar with personally. Oh, I'm really familiar with this. So um, the next one on the list is transportation trading cards. And I put pogs as well. Those You remember in the 90s, those little cardboard or wooden pogs? Uh, yeah, I had a bu bubblegum scented slammer. It was like pink. Pink and rubber on one side and then black on the other side. It smelled like bubble gum. You know, it was like the slammer. And then you nice. I love it. Well, um, so if you go up to Disney Transportation cast members, whether that's on a tram, on a monorail, on a bus, whatever kind of transportation you're going on, a lot of them will just give them to you. But you can certainly ask and say, hey, do you have any trading cards or anything like that? We have actually gotten like coloring books from a bus cast member that had it has like Timon and Pumbaa and it has like safety tips and stuff like they have things to give you which is really cool but we were exiting Magic Kingdom last time and we were getting on the tram 
And I'll be honest with you, we're those parents with a double stroller and we do not want to put it on the tram. So I will walk like the whole parking lot. So I don't have to take that stupid double stroller on the tram. But at the end of the night, Matt will sometimes be like, I'll just take the stroller and you can get on the tram with the kids. So my kids think it's great to get on the tram, right? And so they're like hyped. And the cast members saw that my kids were hyped to be getting on the tram. And she was like, would you like a trading card? And my kids were like, yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, I've never gotten one, but I haven't thought about a pog since I was like on my parents' front porch. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it looks like a little wooden nickel and it has like a Mickey head printed inside what looks kind of like a gear or something like that. I haven't either. You guys bringing that up just brought back so many <laughs> memories. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. I wonder if my mom still has my bubblegum slammer. So the next few, this is where I feel we're kind of bordering included verse free, right? Because uh, the next couple we're going to talk about are within theme parks, within the parks at Walt Disney World. And you obviously paid to be in the parks, right? And every attraction is free if you're not utilizing Genie Plus. Well, the attraction itself is still free. It's just the queue might cost money if you use Genie Plus. Uh, but you know, attractions are included, obviously, with the cost of getting into the park, as is the entertainment, parades, shows, things like that. A lot of the things that we're talking about right, right now, next, are, I think, also kind of considered included with the fee that you paid for your park ticket. But I also think a lot of these are experiences that don't cost anything additional that a lot of listeners might not know about, you know, and that's why I think it's important that we point them out. Because you know about the attractions and you know about the shows and they're easy to navigate and learn about. But these this next list of things, I think, are more hidden gems that don't cost anything extra within the parks. So first, Epcot. Everybody's always asking me, is Epcot a good park for kids? I, I just wish that that would die, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It has to go away. Like, stop talking about Epcot like it is not a place for kids. It is my kids' favorite park. There are plenty of attractions there. Plenty of attractions with low, I think there's, I mean, I don't, I don't, I didn't look this up, so I don't know for sure, but there might be more rides and experiences for little ones at Epcot than Animal Kingdom. Maybe. I mean, there's a lot of things at Animal Kingdom that have a height requirement. Exactly. I think I've said on the podcast before in earlier seasons that we went to Epcot on our first trip. We had a terrible time and I was like, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> and it's ironic because now Epcot is like one of my favorite parks but on top of that it's one of my kids favorite parks too like it's hard to choose a favorite park with between the disney parks they are all fantastic right but my seven-year-old will like ask can we go to epcot today she loves going to epcot yeah, yeah so, like, so some of the things that i tell families that want to skip epcot are about these free things that you can do that a lot of people don't know about one of them is kid cot which is sort of like a passport experience around World Showcase. So obviously the kids are going to love the attractions and things, the headliners, Frozen Ever After. But once you get to World Showcase, for some kids, it can get a little boring, you know, as the grownups are eating and drinking or experiencing and shopping and, and really trying to immerse themselves in these pavilions. Kid Cot is a great way to entertain your kiddos while you're going through World Showcase so they can get a little passport. And then there are stickers that you can get at every Kid Cot booth mm -hmm. in World Showcase and they can fill it up and it can be sort of their adventure while they're going around with you. I love it. We we often hit the Kid Cot station in France because it's there inside like the the building where Layal is. I'm hitting Layal like every time we go to Epcot. I love that bakery. But there's always a line. <laughs> so that's where Matt and I divide and conquer. I will usually get in line and get the food and he will take the kids over to the Kid Cot station. And every country has their own like little craft or something that they do. So my kids love like talking to the cast members that are running it. They'll they'll do this little France related craft or whatever. But they also give them a Ziploc baggie and the Ziploc baggie looks like a suitcase. So every um, country that they go to, they just keep putting it in their little suitcase baggie too. And that's great because... I have been that mom before that my two-year-old left her coloring thing at France and then we're having a meltdown. <laughs> so I love that they give you a baggie to put it all into. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really fun. Carla, was Kid Cot a thing when your kids were little? 
Yeah, for sure. We've done it a couple of times. Yeah, it's really fun. One of my favorite free things in Epcot that my kids currently love and have loved for a while since COVID is Club Cool. So that is sponsored by Coca-Cola and it has basically free sodas from all around the world. We always laugh and take videos every time because inevitably we know we know what Beverly is going to taste like and what it's going to do to our taste buds, right? We know that there is a soda that tastes like barbecue sauce. And yet every single time we sit there and we try them and we gag and we laugh and I don't know, we have a blast there. That is big. It's sending chills down my spine right now. I'm going to correct you real quick and say it's free pop because I'm from Western Pennsylvania. <laughs> I haven't taken my son there yet. And the day that I do, it's going to be like the greatest day of his life. You have to like talk up how awesome Beverly is and trick him. Yeah, I know. I was at Club Cool with Becky in, I don't know, last couple of months or something. She and I were at Club Cool together. I was like, Becky, when's the last time you had a Beverly? <laughs> she was like, I don't, I don't remember, but it was too soon. I was like, all right, girl, we're doing this bottoms up. Let's just go. Want to take my Disney card? I've never had a Beverly. Never had Beverly? Oh, Allie. Oh. I know. I know. That's happening. I know. I'm like, really? We're going to get you a t-shirt the next time you go that says just here to drink the Beverly. (laughs) It's actually making me gag right now. Uh (laughs) There's also really cool scavenger hunts, a lot like Kidcot through World Showcase, and it changes with the season and with the festival and with whatever's going on. So like right now with Flower and Garden Festival, you're looking for Spike the Bee, and he's usually easy to find, but hard to find, you know, easy enough for your young kiddos, but hard enough that they're actually going to have to look. And he's hidden somewhere in each pavilion. And if you fill up your entire scavenger hunt paper or card that you have you get a little prize at the end and it's been like a plate before you know i think last year i don't know what the prize is this year but last year i think it was like a a plastic flower and garden plate like you could take home and eat on they've given cookies before it's been like elsa and anna plates like it's usually a pretty good prize Yeah. yeah so that's a really cool thing to have and i know on easter which just happened um, as we're recording this episode, they did an Easter egg hunt through Epcot. So there were different Easter eggs that you had to find in each of the pavilions. So it's just really cool, really good ways to keep your kids entertained in World Showcase so that you can also have a good time. And it doesn't feel like you're just here, just do this random activity. They're actually engaged in liking it and they're getting something out of it. You know, so it's really great. I will mention just to clarify that the passport book and scavenger hunt map that comes with the prize does cost a small amount of money. But you can easily participate in the scavenger hunt and do the crafts at Kid Cop booths in each pavilion for completely free, which is what we usually do. My kids really love the sticker book in Seas with Nemo. So we'll get on the Seas with Nemo ride and then come out. And sometimes there's a cast member handing them out at the end. And sometimes they're just there in a stand. But um, we always grab one and go look for the fish and put the little stickers in the passport there too. Really cool. And similar to that... Uh, over at Animal Kingdom. And I think a lot of listeners, probably more listeners know about this than they do Kidcot or the Scavenger Hunts in Epcot. Uh, but a really awesome and, and and free, you know, included activity in Animal Kingdom is going to be the Wilderness Explorers. Mm-hmm. Have your kids all done Wilderness Explorers? Yes, mine have. I don't think we've ever fully completed it, but we've definitely started it a couple times. <laughs> Talk about like what it is because my kids haven't done it yet either we have we just haven't spent enough time in animal kingdom yet to do it oh well, it's similar to epcot's kid cot where you're going to pick up somewhat of like a little passport and you are going to go to the different lands you're going to go into pandora you are going to get to see animals you are going to get to learn about the culture about the landscape of that specific place And in the meantime, you're learning, you're also gaining stickers. But it's, again, it's kind of a scavenger hunt where every time you go into Africa or Asia, you're looking for this booth, you're getting to talk and communicate with somebody that is from that specific region. It's super cool. Yeah, you're learning. I think, I honestly think that they were really smart to do this because like you said before, there are so few attractions for kids at Animal Kingdom that if you want to have a good time with Littles, that this is definitely a free way or an included way to do it that will occupy your time and get you, you know, a couple more hours in the park, I think. Yeah, it's like set up like a scouts type thing. 
inspired by art. Uh, it's really cool. I was going to say too that um, I'm an advocate of taking your kids out of school for a vacation. I feel like especially post 2020, it's fine to take your kids out of school for a vacation. Or maybe you're a homeschooling family and you're trying to find something educational. Some school districts, if you're taking your kids out of school, will say, what is the educational value? Which, I mean, that's a whole discussion in itself. But if you have to prove how Disney has educational value, I mean, you're going to the Wilderness Explorers and you're talking to someone who knows all about the biology of flamingos and whatever else. Or you're going to Kidcot and Epcot and you're talking to those people from those different countries. You're learning about cultures. You're learning about geography. The cast members in in especially Epcot in those pavilions are from those countries. You know, you see on their on their name tags where they're from, and a lot of them are there on short term contracts. Or it's really awesome to stop and talk with a lot of those cast members. It's the same at Animal Kingdom, other than in Pandora, you're not speaking directly with an avatar. <laughs> I've asked you know cast members before, what does this pavilion look like home? And it's it's amazing that they'll they'll say like, yeah, this is really. It does look like where they're from. Disney did a lot to make Epcot very authentic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Animation Academy at Animal Kingdom also falls in this category. That is when you take the train out to Rafiki's Planet Watch, which we've talked about on previous episodes on the right way to do Animal Kingdom and the Animal Kingdom itinerary episode. We talked about this and how to fit it into your day. You can learn to draw Disney animation character and it's very very cool we have not done it yet i cannot wait to do it it is free and included and you get a souvenir with it you get to bring home everybody's drawings which i think would be really fun to kind of frame also out there is the affection station which is essentially a petting zoo yeah have you been out there to rafiki's planet watch i have but i got out there and i left i think the affection station would probably send me into like a allergic shock oh that's true petting zoo for me is just not a priority but it is cool that it's there and for some i think it is we went to the the affection station last time we were at animal kingdom and my kids loved it but it's a petting zoo so that means that there's messes and i was like let's let's just get in and get out (laughs) okay moving into magic kingdom and some of the things that are similar to this in that park getting pixie dusted at sir mickey's so I've seen little kids do it all the way up to adults. I don't know that I've ever... I've done it. Have we done it? I, I don't know if you've done it, but I've done it. Yeah, we were there. The, it was the day that we were celebrating 100,000 streams. That's correct. Yeah. I don't think that I've ever done it, but my kids will do it. And it's usually like my girls for their birthday will usually take them to Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. And so to kind of, you know, make the sisters that aren't celebrating their birthday feel included, we'll take them over to Sir Mickey's and they'll pixie dust them and they get all the glitter in their hair and they think that's great too. So anybody is welcome to go do it and the cast members in there are happy to do it for you. Yeah, that's really cool. And it's really special and I think it's something that a lot of people don't know about. What about the Treasures of the Seven Seas and the card signed by Jack, the Pirate Adventure in uh, Adventureland? So I just recently found out about this. I didn't even know this existed. I'm assuming it's similar to Wilderness Explorers or KitKat, right? Yeah, this is, look at this list. On this list, this is, there are so many things that I know about that I have yet to take my kids to do. Further proving the point, people wonder why we continue going back. There is literally so much to do at Disney World. You Like I'm, every time I go, I'm doing something new, right? Or several somethings new. And so this is another one I have not done. I haven't done this one either, but I have seen people doing it because you have to hit all of these different like landmarks over there by the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. And it's really interesting because I, I, I've i seen people be all into it and excited that they found the next thing. They have to go move on to whatever their next clue is. It's really cool. And I didn't know until like this week that you get that really cool card that is signed by Captain Jack. And my kids would probably be really excited about that. (laughs) Yeah, really cool. And we already, obviously, we're going to move out of the parks a little bit. We obviously already talked about the boardwalk. I just want to touch again about the acts there are kind of always changing. You see a lot of the same ones, but a couple of new ones are at least new to me recently. And they're really, really impressive acts. You've got a lot of acrobatics, a lot of um, contortionists. And the magician, again, just shout out to Moreau. 
he's really amazing from Louisiana and really good at what he does. That is like the best. That is like maybe my number one free thing you can do at Disney World. You know what else is over there? And I just I am obsessed with that whole area. Anytime there's like bistro lights, I'm automatically attracted. <laughs> and I think I saw a picture of you sitting right where I love to sit, Katie. Were you watching a movie on the lawn right there? Yeah. We at the boardwalk? That. Yeah. So there's a movie. I mean, it's the most perfect location. So the all those entertainers are kind of right in that curve of the boardwalk. And right there is also this huge lawn space where at night they play movies on the lawn, which is another huge free thing at the Disney resorts. You don't even have to be staying at that resort. I think when I watched a movie there, we were actually staying at the Swan and Dolphin. Shocking. But we walked over there at night. My kids were doing cartwheels and playing with other kids. Matt and I were watching a movie on the lawn. There were entertainers everywhere. It's just... I love that. Yeah, we we just did that on my birthday. So that was the thing. We I wanted to go get pizza from the pizza window and I wanted to get margaritas and nachos right there across from the pizza window. And my kids, like there was no tables or anywhere to sit. So we're like, that's okay. We'll go have a picnic over on the lawn right there by boardwalk. And my older daughter, Bella, she was, she noticed that they were setting up, you know, the big screen for the movies under the stars. And she's like, mom, can we stay and watch the movie? And I was like, kiddo, we'll see. It ended up that um, we were meeting another one of our mutual friends, Taryn. Taryn came to meet me at the boardwalk and it was great. Like they put on Encanto and we could just talk and hang out. And the kids, like people don't care if your kids are like running around and doing cartwheels while the movie is on. It's very just a hang out and have a great time kind of scenario. I cannot express how great it is. I mean, honestly, we, my wife and I have a drink. We often meet friends there mm -hmm. and everybody is so happy. Yeah. The drink is not free. <laughs> the drink we pay. No. <laughs> but it's the perfect blend of fun and you can go do things while also relaxing and not feeling like you're rushing off to the next thing. The vibes are free. Yeah. Amazing. Have you been to the dance hall? No. Have you? Dancer? No. I'm not going to the dance hall with you. You'll show us all up. Oh, Allie hasn't been to the dance hall? No. Well, Allie only, I don't know. Allie only dances on the monorail, for those of you that don't know. <laughs> That dance hall is really cool, though. I have heard from other Smart Moms agents that they will go just like on a girl's trip and have a great time there and Jelly Rolls. Jelly Rolls is that dueling piano bar, which is also totally incredible, but it does have a cover fee. The Atlantic Dance Hall, though, does not have a cover fee. So technically it's free. Yep. Uh, OK, well, Disney also this one. I don't think this counts as free. This is included. Disney offers complimentary mini golf if you book a vacation package that is really cool but that's like included right like you get you don't, you don't consider that free i totally consider it i think it's totally free all right well i guess i'm outnumbered but it's included with your vacation. Package. yeah it's it's a cool thing that you get like as an extra perk for booking a disney package i swore we were going to do this on our spring break trip we did not get around to it but we were driving by one of the courses in a minivan, which is Disney's Lyft service. And we had an awesome Lyft driver who just knew so much uh, about Disney. And it was really fun. Which actually, do you all know the three things that you cannot buy like at the Disney speedways? You know, they have like gas stations on property. There's like three speedways and there are three. No, you can't buy gum. That's the first one I gave him. Yeah, gum. Pepsi. Pepsi and gum are two of them. Yep. Good. Pepsi shouldn't be allowed. Sorry to our listeners that like Pepsi. Oh, come on, Pepsi. Carla. Awful. <laughs> Awful. And what's, and do you know the third? This one was hard and I thought this was interesting, but it makes sense. No, what is it? A lottery ticket. That's a, the three things you can't buy at the Disney gas stations. Anyway, our Uber driver or Lyft minivan driver knew that trivia and was just having a lot of fun. And we were driving by one of the mini golf courses and I was like, oh, there's the putt-putt. I really want to go to that. And he was like, this was interesting. He said, that's not putt-putt, it's mini golf. And I was like, what's the difference? And he was like, that is an actual 18 hole golf course just shrunk down in size. And I oh, never really cool. knew what the difference was. And he was like, it's like exactly like an 18 hole golf course. And it's really, he said it's really tough. And that that's what it is classified as. I was going to say Becky and her kids have done the mini golf before. And she said that you can choose if you want to go like an easier route or like the more challenging route. And I was surprised that they say the challenging route really is challenging. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, like I said, I've mentioned a couple of times on the show, I've done it before, but I was so little. I don't really remember it. 
Okay, continue moving here. Obviously, riding transportation, I think that's a great option. Ride the monorail, the Skyliner, and the boats to destinations. Do it to different resorts to check out the decorations at the resorts and the vibes at the resorts and the hub grasses or the bonfires that are going on. There's lots of things to see and do at the resorts. Specifically, while we were there, the Easter eggs were out at Contemporary and the Grand Floridian. So riding the monorail was fun for the views, but also for the stops. And uh, I think that's not something to discount on your trip. It's free. Uh, uh, make sure you take time to do it. And watching the electrical water pageant around Bay Lake over in the Magic Kingdom area, you can see it from Fort Wilderness, Wilderness Lodge, Grand Floridian, Contemporary, Polynesian. Uh, it kind of goes all through Bay Lake. And after the fireworks, it starts in specific times. Obviously, you can see it at different parts of those resorts, but it's really fun and it's classic. It, it was there the electrical water pageant is really silly now. Like it's it's old technology that's been there since Disney World opened, I believe. Yeah. I did the the tour. What's the tour called? At Magic King, Keys to the Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And it was really fun. And it took us backstage. And we actually got to see all of the floats for the electrical water pageant. It was really interesting to see them up close. Like the giant grids with the lights that are clearly on different timers to display different things while the show is going on. Uh, but it was really cool to see it from like a, a behind the scenes vantage point. I love how Allie's really talking this up. Don't go out of your way, you guys, to see this. It's going to hit on nostalgia more than anything, but it is not riveting in any way. The snail like crawling across the water or whatever it is. This is like um, Fantasyland draft and I got stuck with pick something in Bay Lake and I'm trying to talk up the electrical water pageant. It's like, it's like single, single beat renditions of Disney music like it's really funny I I think it's cute but I just sort of view it as like a bonus to my night whenever we're walking out of Magic Kingdom or if we're staying in one of those resorts right there I I wouldn't go out of my way to watch it but I think it's cool you know what I was on a boat I was on a boat back to the Polynesian ones and we were in the water with no we were going back to Wilderness Lodge and we were in the water with the electrical water pageant and that was kind of cool like we are pretty close to it. I would go out of my way to do is watch fireworks from the beach at the Poly. Maybe it's your first night there and you're not at a park yet, but you still want that really like Disney feeling and you want to see fireworks. Go to the Poly on the beach. It's free. Watch the fireworks there. They pipe in the music. There's so many little hidden gem spots to watch fireworks. You don't have to be in the park to do it. And it's totally worth it. It's amazing. You have a central view. They pipe in the music. You can do it from the contemporary as well. There's a terrace you can watch from. And it's easy to get to. Like if you're if it's not a park day or it's your arrival day or you're not staying in that area, just take whatever your resort transportation is over to Magic Kingdom and ride the monorail to the resort you want to watch from. Very easy, good access, and you typically open to the public. The only time you can't do it is if it's like a very like the 4th of mm -hmm. July show or the New Year's Eve, like really big shows like that. They'll usually say resort guests only, uh, but most nights, no problem getting in there and watching. And it, you can see Tinkerbell, you know, from the beach and you can hear every, it's really awesome. It's a beautiful view. That, But can you just envision like it's your first time going to Disney World with your kids and you take your transportation over to Magic Kingdom to the transportation center, right? You hop on the monorail. From the monorail, you're seeing the castle for the first time. You get to go through the contemporary. You get to see the Polynesian. You get to go on the beach and watch the fireworks. I don't know. It's just kind of hitting like all of those big Disney things on your first night. I think it's the perfect first night. Yeah, we always make it like a thing, right? The first view of the castle. Who sees it mm -hmm. first? Because it's not usually, we usually see Tower of Terror the second we drive onto property. Like that's usually, we see it right away and the Skyliner, but the castle, you don't really see when you drive right onto property and you have to be kind of intentionally going to that area. So it's like a thing in our family. First castle sighting of the trip. It's very exciting. Uh, who's going to see it first and at what point? So yeah, I agree with you, Carla. Isn't that kind of funny though, that like Tower of Terror is sort of like the landmark that you associate with disney first instead of the castle whenever you're driving through my kids get pumped <laughs> it's so exciting though as soon as you see it it's just so exciting we're gonna take another break but before we do one more free thing kind of setting your mood when you're on disney property but not at the parks activities that your resort's going to offer we talked a lot about this on the resort or the in the bubble staying in the bubble episode as well as our rest day itinerary 
But your resort is going to offer a number of free things while you're staying there or included things. So poolside games every day, usually from like one to four, are going to be super fun. Cast member led. When we were staying at Yacht Club last week, we played one I had never seen before where they were like doing a potato head relay. And they threw potato head pieces into the water and had to collect, dive down and collect them and build their potato head on the edge as fast as they could. Oh my gosh, I love that. So cute. And even, you know, my son who's newly six was di- jumping in and diving down and getting the pieces. Mm-hmm. So much fun. Really cute. Uh, most of the resorts do nightly bonfires. The bonfire pit at Yacht Club, Yacht and Beach was right uh, next to the slide entrance over there by the beach. And most resorts will have one. You can roast s'mores and things. Movies Under the Stars, which we already talked about. And usually they're playing really fun, awesome movies that your kids want to watch. So they had Wish on Easter Day. Yeah, they had Wish playing Yeah, when I was there. Really cool. And Mm -hmm. just a great way to spend your downtime. Your resort is going to entertain you. All right, we're going to take one more quick break. When we come back, we're going to round out our list. I mean, look at how much we've already covered. And there's still more. Hey there, friends. I'm Katie Boone, one of your podcast co-hosts. I'd love to invite you to join my Facebook Disney planning community called Planning Disney with Babies, Toddlers, and Preschoolers. In my group, I love discussing all the aspects of planning your magical vacation with little ones. Find my community at facebook.com slash groups slash plan Disney with little ones. Again, that's facebook.com slash groups slash plan Disney with little ones. When you join, don't forget to tell me you heard about my group on the podcast. See you there. Are you planning a Disney or Universal vacation and wanting a unique t-shirt to show your fandom? Do you like having a shirt that causes random strangers to stop you and say, Hey, I like your shirt. Then check out magicteesforme.com. That's magic, T-E-E-S, for me, dot com. You can scroll through the pages of designs or use the search bar to find a specific theme. Looking for a rare idea? Give it a search. Disney, Universal, or something else altogether. That's magicteesforme.com. Unique tees for part people. Okay. We are talking about free things at Walt Disney World. I I mean, we've already been going for a really long time and we've covered a lot. I, I think listeners are probably surprised by how much is free. I mean, I know I was when we were compiling the list. What about y'all? This is a lot, but if you've been listening up to now, I feel like we're really cracking into the good ones now. Like they were all great, but we're getting into the really good stuff. I agree now. with you. And look at how much like Carla and I keep saying, I've never done that. I've never done like look at how much on is on the list that you can't even do in one trip. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This one is great. We just experienced this spontaneous character meet and greets at Disney resorts. This does happen. You cannot plan for it. It's not going to be outlined in your app and they will show up and they'll just be there and you'll get to go have a meet and greet. Da- Chip and Dale were at Yacht and Beach Club over our spring break trip. And we've seen a number of characters over the years, but it, it does happen. And it's really, really fun. We were so excited because my kids did meet Chip and Dale at Yacht Club this past weekend. We also met the Easter Bunnies. They have a Mr. Easter Bunny and a Mrs. Easter Bunny, and they're super cute. So I was excited that we got to meet them. In the past, we've also met Chip and Dale and Daisy at Yacht and Beach, like around the boardwalk. And again, at Animal Kingdom Lodge. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, it's just a reminder that you're at Disney and you're somewhere otherworldly, you know, because these these characters are there with you too. You know, this is where they are and they just show up where you are, which is all the more magical. You mentioned Animal Kingdom Lodge. The animals. Carla, one, mm-hmm. of, one of your favorites. Free viewing of the animals. Go to Sana for dinner and then after go outside. There's this really cool fire pit and basically like the savannah is all around you. And it's like the perfect ending to your night at Disney. Yeah, it is a circular viewing area. So you do feel really encompassed by the savannah. And there's usually a cast member out there that can give you a lot of information and facts about the animals. Specific ones, you know, cast members know their names and their histories and specific things about them, as well as the species itself. So you can learn and talk about a whole lot of of stuff. Anywhere close to sundown. I mean, there are animals everywhere. Yeah. Animal Kingdom Lodge. I think we we sometimes take it for granted how cool it is. It is so cool. Like if we're taking a day just resort hopping, which resort hopping in itself is free, right? But if we're taking a day resort hopping, we will go to Animal Kingdom Lodge just to play at the playground and see the animals. And there are like different viewing spots for you to go look at different animals. And my kids think that's great. (laughs) 
I remember one time we were staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge and our room took forever to be ready. It wasn't ready until like after the time it should have been. And we were entertained all day. Like we watched, we walked out on the Savannah in that terrace we were just talking about. Then we went up, they have rocking chairs and a, like a big, huge balcony that you Mm -hmm. can sit in. And we sat in those for a while. And there's just a lot to do. You know, we were entertained for the majority of the day. Lately, I've had a lot of families that I'm working with ask me where they can stay that has a playground at the resort. And a lot, not all, but a lot of the Disney resorts do have playgrounds. And I'm surprised how popular and in demand of a feature that really is. It's a cool thing to have for free on your resort. Right. You can't pool hop, but you can playground hop. Yeah. We, we make a day of that too. Like we'll go to, we'll take a Skyliner crawl and we'll say, okay, we're going to eat the fancy cupcake or dessert at each resort. And we're going to go hit the playgrounds at each of the resorts. So we'll hit the one on Caribbean beach resort. We'll go over to pop century. We'll go over to art of animation And I'm actually like, I'm in the process of building a guide for my group, which you probably heard the ad for, but um, I'm trying to build a guide right now where I'm ranking all of the playgrounds because we go to them often. My kids love them. Yeah, that's really cool. And we recently, my kids have never stayed at Art of Animation and I was just with my son on our trip. It was just him and I for a moment. And I, we were at Art of Animation, we were walking around and he was just walking around that resort is unbelievable like I say all the time it's like stepping into a Disney movie it really he was just jaw dropped this is amazing oh my yeah. god this is way better like he just could not believe it we were walking like through radiator springs and I got his picture with one of the cars it art of animation is kind of unbelievable it it really is it is the most imaginative resort on Disney property hands down what about if you're traveling to Disney in a specific season? Have you all done the Christmas tree walk at Disney Springs? There's a tree walk at Disney Springs. There's a tree at every resort, sometimes multiple trees. Mm -hmm. So that could be a tree crawl if you wanted to. (laughs) Yeah, I love, obviously, I love the holiday season at Disney because of this. And every, obviously, all the parks have trees and they're all decorated differently. But the trees in the resorts are all decorated to that resort, which is really cool. Yeah, they are the coolest. Like if you are at Disney in that Christmas time frame, you really could just make a day and say, we're going to go snap a family picture in front of each Christmas tree. And that would be such a cool memory, a cool souvenir to have after the fact. They're they're all amazing. We had stayed at the All-Star Resorts I remember seeing sports and music and then we ended up going over to Art of Animation. Like every every tree is just incredibly decorated. Like they're really, really cool. The ones at the Poly had like little turtles and stuff on them. Like it's awesome. Yeah. The the tree walk at Disney Springs, the trees are extremely elaborate. And I don't think we have this on the list. Parking is free at Disney Springs, which is huge. Yeah. Because you mentioned that other resort also in Orlando. If you want to go to their area, that would be the equivalent to Disney Springs. You're paying like you're going to the park. You're paying that $32 to park. It's really wild. Yeah. Uh, Another thing happening at Disney Springs. This is so exciting. I hope I, you know, get to see it. This is huge. Disney has a new drone show. We have talked on this show about where, like, where are the drones? And I am, I have to just say, I recently saw Epcot's new fireworks show. I had not seen it yet. Luminous, the symphony of us. It's not good by my standard. I disagree. I loved Luminous. It's great. (laughs) I I think it's, for my standards and Disney standards, it's well below. I, I mean, this is a show I would honestly skip. And okay, listen, 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 listen. It doesn't give you the feels of Happily Ever After, right? Okay, it doesn't do that. However, the music is good. The storytelling is good. Music is bad. Storytelling is a reach. No. The great thing about Luminous yes. is... Episode, ladies, you are... You have to move on. great thing is you can see it from anywhere around around World Show... Or, well, yeah, around World Show my, point, my point in bringing it up is that we've talked at length that Epcot has a venue that is perfect for an unbelievable show that should include drones and a lot of other elements, and it just doesn't. The new show is flat. I don't like it. Currently, our technology is not as riveting as France's technology, okay? 
I've talked about this before. However, Disney Springs is getting a drone show called Dreams That Soar. It's coming to Disney Springs for a limited time. It's only going to be there from the end of May, the 21st, to the end of Labor Day weekend, September 2nd. Maybe this is their test. Yeah, I'm a little curious. Like, why is it only there for a limited time? Is it going to be exceptional? Like, did they put a lot into it for it being such a limited time? What is the point? You know, I'm I'm excited to kind of see what it's about. I'm a little nervous, but I'm excited that it's going to be there. And it's long time coming. Like, it's something with drones and a show like that. And a venue like Disney Springs, I think, is really interesting. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. I'm really excited about it. But also, on top of that, at the top of the episode where we mentioned that, you know, Disney Visa Chase card holders can get that free dining plan promo, I believe some of the dates that they'll be able to get that promotion will also be while Dreams That Soar is running. And they can use their free dining at Disney Springs. <laughs> and yeah. so that's a whole lot of free happening on your Disney Springs day if you use that promo. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. You can also just at Disney Springs, you can snap a photo with the Lego sculptures at the Lego store. They're really cool. You've got a lot of fan favorites, Star Wars, Frozen, the big dragon in the lake. That's really cool to see. There are interactive fountains at Disney Springs that are fun to to play with. Live music. Who doesn't love live music? That's happening all evening long, typically at the House of Blues, Reglan Road, which also has some dance elements to it. Homecoming. And you can there's a, an outdoor stage kind of over by the Lego store in the world of Disney and that out on the water that is often having live music and entertainment, which is really, really fun. Okay. We've talked a lot about resort hopping for a lot of reasons. That's again on our list, just to kind of check out where you might want to use your bounce back offer and stay next time. And two last ones are the biggest free things you can possibly have at Disney World. Who wants to take them? So Disney recently announced that for 2025, all Disney World vacation packages are getting free water park access on check-in day. This is huge. We have said so many times on the podcast about how great the water parks are. We want you to go experience those Disney water parks because they are truly incredible. And Disney is making it so that you can experience them for free. And on top of that... You can book your 2025 vacation with a Smart Moms agent today. <laughs> so you should hop on it. I just uh, booked my free cruise stay because we have a, a sailing on the treasure next spring break. And we just booked it with our friends. We're going to stay, obviously, before the sailing. And we're going to use that first day. We're going to a water park before our cruise. I'm so excited. Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach are truly incredible. We go there very often. And I am So excited that more people are going to get to experience it. My son is dying to go to Blizzard Beach. He brings it up all the time. I cannot wait to take him. 2025 will probably be when we do it for the first time. And uh, it's going to be great. And then the very last one, the very biggest Disney freebie, your kids under the age of three are free. People say you should wait. We could not disagree more. Bring them while they're free. free. Free park entry, free food, free on the resort. They are free, free, free all the way around. Kids under three, you're not paying. Yeah, that's honestly, so many people have this misconception that Disney is so expensive that they can't afford it. And I had that misconception too for the longest time of my life. <laughs> I never bothered to actually look how much Disney would cost, but everyone says Disney is expensive. And I was like, oh, well, we can't do it, right? That was really silly. We went to Disney, like I said, in 2021 for our first trip. And for that trip, my three kids were five, two, and four months old. And I was like, this is the cheapest we'll ever go because two of them are free. Yeah. <laughs> and it was. And and then, then, then you were hooked. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really glad we broke all of this down. Obviously, when you plan a trip to Disney, you're going to have a price tag of some sort when you build that package and you decide how many nights you're staying and where you're staying and how many parks you're going to. Are you having a dining plan or not? We understand that the budget is going to be there no matter what. But I think it's important that people really zoom in, think about these things that we've laid out today and think about how you can enhance your experience without raising that budget, without adding more to it, because it is totally possible to go and have all of these free experiences and not have to add to that big amount that you're going to pay for the package or or whatever that budget is. So I'm so excited we laid that out. And we want to hear what you thought. Did we miss anything? Have you done something that's free at Disney World? Or did you learn about something today that was free at Disney World that you're going to put on your list for next time? Please let us know. 
Uh, we love to know when people are taking our advice and putting it to good work. That is so much fun for us. And you know what? Leave us a review and, and let us know there. Recently, Laura Lou 112 said, I just started listening and I can't stop. I love Disney and learning so much about it. It's my happy place at home when I can't be at WDW. We feel the same way. Recording about Disney World when we can't be there makes us feel like we're at home as well and gets us excited for the next trip. So thank you, Laura, for saying that and everybody else for listening. Thanks again. Before you go, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notified each week that a new podcast episode has dropped. Take the time to do it. Don't miss out because we'll be back with new ones next week. And we're really grateful when you do. Don't forget to join our Patreon community right there in today's show notes. You will be hit with some amazing guides. If you like listening to these episodes for planning, you're going to want the physical guides because it's going to take you even further. Less notes for you as well. You know, a lot of the information that we talk about on podcast episodes are laid out in the guides later. Again, if you like today's episodes, you may want to check out our other episodes, Disney Vacation Saving Strategies and tips, tricks, and hacks for the Disney dining plan. Other great ways to think about saving when you're thinking about going to Disney. That's going to do it for us this time. And until next time, we'll see you real soon.